it started with this moment right here, right here, this connection point. How can we take these real life pressure tests versus the theoretical interpretations of Aikido? Let's use this point as a launching pad to explore more. Here we go. My goal is not to prove that Aikido is some deadly martial art or it can be Judo, Muay Thai, etc. My point in this video is there's things that Aikido can teach us about the human body and how you can connect with someone. Whether you can pull this off in a fight, self-defense situation, etc. is another story. And in fact, we've kind of explored that already in the previous video. But let's go and let's go really in depth. Take an inspiration from that connection point with almost like a jab. Alex and I, my Jiu-Jitsu Aikido friend, decided let's start from there. Notice the ball? That was a brilliant idea by Alex. And what the ball does is it distributes the force in a way where you don't have to worry about your fingers. So essentially, it's just one force vector. And so what we're doing is we're just practicing this idea of connecting to the center. Notice how my spine concaves? He's connecting to my center. So this is something, if you look at a lot of Rukas' interpretation of Aikido, he doesn't connect as we say in Chinese. So you see, look at him connecting to me. It's different than muscling, right? If you notice, it's very different than muscling. So we're just exploring this concept. Again, how much can you apply this in a fight? That's for debate, but lots of great body awareness. So look at me, I'm really pushing, I'm really pushing, but still, he connects to me and I can't push back. You see that? So this is a concept of Aikido that some schools teach. So. Look at this, he's connecting to my center. Look at him, and I'm resisting, I can't. And it's not because this guy's 220 pounds or whatever. So now we take the ball and we use our hands. So I'm trying to replicate what I saw in the Ruckus sparring video. And so he hasn't seen the video, so I'm trying to explain to him, this is what I saw. So how can you take that moment and kind of interpret it as an Aikido moment, just explore connection, you see? So we switch legs now. Just trying different stances. Again, going from that almost like jab exchange position. And now let's explore connection. So look at that. Off balancing me. Now we take the ball just to get the force vector more concentrated. And again, see I'm trying to resist, right? I'm trying to resist. He's just giving. He's not trying to push into me. He's not trying to hurt me. He's just like, ah, I give you the ball. Take the ball. Take the ball. Take the ball. And look at that. I'm like, okay, he got me. <laughs> you see, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, just think benevolent thoughts. Again, we explored this in the previous video, but you have to explore intention too. It's connection, but also intention. I'm trying to put up a boundary there. See, I'm trying to put up a boundary, but he's just giving. He's giving and actually crossing my boundary. Another thing to pay attention to is alignment. If you don't even allow your own center to connect to yourself, you're probably going to get pushed. See this awkward position my arms are in? I have no way to project my center and connect. So I will try to connect back. If you just notice in general, I don't connect as well. And of course, a plane's going by while I'm recording this. But so the connection from my center to my extremities, my limb, it's not completely there, right? So Alex is telling me, okay, how do you use your center and make it an extension? Watch this, see, see, see my switch? And now I'm connected, I'm connecting my center to his center. You see that? So rewatch that. It's just a really cool moment in how the body connects and then how you use that connection to connect with the other person. So what has Aikido taught me? Aikido's taught me a type of body awareness, how my center of mass, my center of gravity, and how every movement can start from there. The second part to this is once you find that connectedness between your own body center and areas that extend, how can you use that to connect to someone else's body and their center and how the forces interplay? But next up, what you're gonna see is we're gonna explore not just the connectedness, but intention. How does intention change things? So this is an exercise we just messed around with. We call it the you take it, be my guest. We're both trying to just friendly give each other the ball and then he pushes. So one person decides to not be friendly and try to push in with force. And then you try to keep up that casual, friendly, beneficent type of intention. And so we're both like, no, you take it. You take the ball. You take the ball. Come on, ISS, you take the ball. You take the ball. It's my pleasure. It's all yours. It's all yours. And watch this. I'm going to shift right now. 
Now I'm trying to push in and look at that. He just keeps up the beneficent intention. So the question is, can you apply this in a fight or whatever? First of all, to analyze that question, I would break up fights into two categories. Right? One type of category is the agreed upon fight where whether it's in the ring, in the cage, or even on the street where people let their egos get in the way, it could have not happened, but they agreed on it and they fought. Versus, there's another type of fight I call it the sneak attack fight or the unintended fight or whatever. One party doesn't know that there's going to be a fight, right? Someone tries to rob you, someone tries to sucker punch you. In those two situations, can you use this type of intention, this type of connection? So here's more of the you take it, you take it type of exercise. So we're just being like, no, you take it. It's almost like Asian parents fighting over the bill. It's kind of like that, right? So you just take it. No, no, I, I got the bill. I got the bill. You got the bill. And then one of us is going to switch intentions. So right about here, I'm going to switch. I'm going to see my energy becomes intrusive, but he just keeps beneficent energy and I fall. So we're going to do it again. This time we insist we're fighting over the bill again. <laughs> Funny analogy, right? We're fighting over the bill. So this time let's change the directions of the force vectors too. And so notice my connection to my limb is really good in this. So he's going to give intrusive energy and I just keep insisting. I keep insisting you take it. And he's the one that ends up falling. Even if some of this beneficent energy, this intention stuff seems a little vague and weird. I hope what you can see in this is that when you give yourself a limited set of rules and you explore awareness and proprioception, it can bring out certain things that might get lost or overshadowed when you do something more intense like wrestling or jujitsu or judo. I have a similar analogy, a similar situation here with Tai Chi push hands. So let's watch this. So this is Jan, he's a Tai Chi champion. And that guy who's getting pushed is Jason. Jason's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Barrett Yoshida. So this is fixed stepped push hands. So you can't move your feet. And with these types of limitations, you also can't grab the head. You can't grab the legs. What you're going to start becoming aware of is certain parts of the body that will make this push hands easier or harder. So what you can see is despite being a black belt, but not having as much experience in this rule set, Jason might not be as aware of his body's connection in this type of stance. Also, how wide his feet are apart will affect his center of gravity. Also, his hip position, how low, how high his hips are. So these are all things he's going to learn that will help him in his jiu-jitsu or his MMA. So here's me with Jan. And again, I don't do push hands, right? I mean, we had that really funny one video, but this is more kind of just actual pushing and not just being pushed. So I pull him into my guard, which I would have lost under these rules, but it's pretty funny, the little jujitsu I do. So this one's pretty cool. My hip position wasn't in the right place and Jan just pushes me. So from this, I learned very quickly, you see? Now I think about my hip position immediately. I'm not gonna let that happen to me again. So he's gonna off balance me another way, but he's not gonna push me again. Again, I butterfly hook him. <laughs> so Jiu-Jitsu Jerry, imagine someone who's never had grappling experience or someone who's never had any type of fight experience and you put them in a Jiu-Jitsu class or a Judo class or a wrestling class. It's gonna be really hard for them to grasp all that information at once. And that's what this Tai Chi push hands is so good at. The fixed step very quickly because of the limited rule set, you start understanding your hip position matters so much. I went around the neighborhood, some of my neighbors, I just started doing this kind of stuff with them and big guys too. Initially I was pushing them and then I just told them, here's a secret. I'm going to give you the secret. You just lower your hips, match my hips, if not be lower than me. And all these big guys started beating me. It's pretty funny. There's nothing sacred, nothing woo woo about it. It's literally, you get your body awareness, you understand and you apply it within this rule set. And that's what this Tai Chi push hands experience really taught me. There's many ways to teach people. And I think this is a very effective way to teach people certain things about the body and force. So let's take this fixed step Tai Chi push hands and let's think about Aikido. How can we connect to each other's center? How can we also connect with intention that maybe is benevolent? <laughs> so in Tai Chi rules, we both would have been at a draw because I pulled them out too. But again, we're not doing Tai Chi. We're trying to use that exercise to explore different things about the human body. So shout out to Jan, by the way, for the push hands lesson. So here, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So we both <laughs> lost that. <laughs> Pay attention basically to how our bodies change with intention. I am definitely pushing against him. Notice, this is kind of a more giving energy Alex is giving me, right? From his center to his arm to my spine. It's a friendly, it's almost like, hey, just take my vibe. Just take my vibe. See how it's hard for me to resist it? 
So instead of resisting it, why not just give? Give a little back. So that's what I'm playing around with here. See, I'm just giving, 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 give it back. And then Alex explained that he felt the force in his spine, which meant I connected to his center. There's many people who say Tai Chi is a good proprioception exercise. Proprioception is basically knowing where your body is, knowing the position of the various limbs. Now I tend to agree with that. And I think Aikido in a similar way can teach you a lot about proprioception too. Besides that, another analogy I would give for connection is when you successfully connect to someone, it's almost like you're pushing up against a wall now. Because again, it's their center of mass, their center of gravity. It's gonna feel different than if you don't connect with them. And if you guys experiment with this, if you successfully connect to their center, which a lot of times it's the spine, but it's not always their spine, because again, the center of mass shifts depending on what position you're in. You're gonna feel like, oh wow, there's like a wall here. Wow, but I can push the wall down. So now we're taking more concepts you might think about in Tai Chi and seeing how it works with some Aikido experimentation. So he's just giving me, just pushing me. Um, and what if I try to divert his force? So if I'm trying all these kind of things you associate normally with, okay, I'm gonna divert your force, but he's just giving, he's just giving. He's saying, just be my guest, be my guest. And look at him clinging on to me like a backpack, which is an analogy some Aikidokas give. And here again, he's just giving, he's just giving. He's insisting I have his arm. He's insisting I have his arm. And then I'm gonna try to divert his force again. And I connect back. So now we try kind of the circle thing that we see Tai Chi people do. But let's explore connection. Notice how connected I am, my center. And then he tries to connect his center and my center. So it's like a center connection type of exercise. And here I'm connecting, we're connecting. And so we're kind of taking that push hands practice and doing a different exploration. And now look at how connected I am, my center to my limbs. And he's trying to push into me, right? But I'm connected to a center and I can off balance him very easily. So here, see that? I'm just muscling. I'm trying to muscle. You see how the connection's off in this? So both of us aren't connected. So the force goes whichever direction it got stuck in. So now doing more of the circle and very connected here. He's not connected and he's trying to muscle back. He's trying to out muscle me, but I got him because I'm very connected. My center of mass, my center of gravity's joined. And unless he connects back, he's just gonna get pushed out. So here we go some more. And this time, I'm not really going to connect him. I'm just going to see if I can resist in other ways. Right? You see this a lot in Tai Chi push hands. They try to grab and cling on. Look at how much his center is off balancing my center. So now, okay, what if I shift? Well, if I shift my weight, he's got me there. And look at how like a backpack he attaches to me. I love that analogy a viewer gave once. The beauty under push hands is once he connects, it's really hard to get the connection away. I'm trying it again. Okay, what if I just don't let him connect to me? Divert his limb somehow. But if his center is moving that direction, it's hard for me to get his hand off me and trying various things, you know, maybe doing that. <laughs> so I encourage you guys to explore this. And so now look at me. I say, okay, well, let me try to connect back. Trying to connect back. I lost that connection. There it is. There it is. There it is. Shout out to this woman giving herself a cameo on screen. Again, zero ego here. Hopefully you can see. We're not trying to make each other fall. We're not trying to hurt each other. It's just exploration into the body. This fixed step push hands really allows for exploration of center and intention. So we're talking about where do you feel the force if the connection is established, right? And we're talking about you probably feel it in your feet. The force pushes all the way down. It gets your fascia connected. So look at me. That was very good connection. My body and to his body. So we're just kind of reflecting on that moment right there. How would you apply this, let's say, in a more standard wrestling or standard jujitsu context? So here's some explorations we did. So these are more standard positions you might see in wrestling, grappling, Muay Thai, etc. So 
besides kind of just exploring these positions, it's also a reminder of what, what we call spear energy or what I call intrusive energy is. Yes, it's literally energy that's attacking you. It's going into you. It's different than the Aikido energy we've been experimenting. So I'm just experimenting that back, right? You see this in wrestlers, judokas, jiu-jitsu guys a lot, right? It's like the energy is pushing through you. It's very violent. So I'm not one to use my head to push too much, but it's good to kind of experiment this. <laughs> so, okay, I'm just having fun. And you're just, <laughs> my long neck. <laughs> and I know you could always shoot down for some kind of single leg, double leg, etc. I am not a person with too much spear energy or intrusive energy, whatever you call it. I think I guess I'm pretty Aikido in general. So look at what happens. Look at that. Very important distinction to make here is when he's applying that Aikido connection, he's not trying to spin me. It just naturally happens. The spiral energy, whatever you call it. So now think about this pummeling position that you have in wrestling, MMA, Muay Thai, etc. Because there's so many points of connection already of the two bodies, it's very easy to establish this kind of Aikido type of connection. You see that? You get the Aikido connection naturally. You just spin. <laughs> so that's, he's not trying to spin me. It's just when you're giving that kind of Aikido intention, it just spins. So I know some Aikidokas say something spiral energy. This could be what they're talking about. Again, there's so much debate and this video is probably going to set off a million essays from Aikidokas. Here, look at the connection. We're exploring the connection point. And see, my center is not really connected, right? My center is not connected to his, but his center is connected to mine. So watch how I try to spin him. See, I'm trying to muscle him, but I'm not connected to a center, but he's connected to my center. You see that? Natural spin. So now, watch this. I'm trying to muscle more. Okay, this is muscling. I'm going to muscle. I'm muscling you. I'm muscling you. And he's just thinking, well, I insist you go that way. I give you that beautiful view over there. <laughs> so here, he's giving me intrusive energy, aka spear energy. Of course, initially, I'm going to resist, right? He said, I'm going to resist back. I'm giving him intrusive energy back. Some people call it shield energy. But what if, see that? I just shift to, hey, go check out the pier over there. So again, he's giving me a lot of intrusive energy. Some people call it spear energy. How do you know he's actually intruding on me? To make sure he's giving me the right energy. Look at that. If I don't resist, I get pushed back, right? So now I resist a little. But what if I say, look, check out the beach over there. You see how it changes? So the fascinating part is just how the shift in my body, the shift in his body, not trying to hurt him, not even trying to resist him, just trying to show him the beach. So at this point, there's quite a few interpretations to all this. I can see three immediately. One is maybe since we both think Aikido is cool, we've hypnotized each other to react a certain way depending on the circumstances. That's a valid critique if you think that's the way it is. Another interpretation could be this whole concept of connection and benevolent intention, what it does is it calms the person being attacked, so naturally he'll find ways out of it through connection. A third interpretation could be because there's a connection and your body shifts its intention, it affects the attacker, the uke, whatever you call him, and that's what's actually causing this type of reaction. So the first explanation is all fake. We all rehearsed this, which I can guarantee you we didn't. The second is more the person being attacked. So it's an individual thing. And the third thing is more of the unit. Something's happening to the unit to cause this type of interaction, this reaction. If you guys have other interpretations, let us know. So here's another example. He gives me really intrusive energy. Some people in Aikido call it spear. And you know he's doing it because he drove me back. So now I'm resisting, right? Giving him some energy back. That's kind of more violent. But what if I shift? What if I just want to show him the ground? So here's another example. He's really pushing into me. So I'm trying to muscle. I'm like, Ugh! what if I just want to show him a seat? See that? So here's another one. The mind's panicking. Maybe you want to intrude him back or maybe you want to just keep that boundary right there. But hey, look over there. There's a little puppy over there. Why don't you go check out that puppy? So I've explained this in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out in the pinned comments. But there's a bunch of ways as humans we usually respond to any type of situation. It doesn't have to be physical. It's just any type of situation that generates stress. You could really try to go after it and beat it. That's what I would call spear energy or intrusive energy. There's, I establish a little boundary, you don't cross it. Some Aikido circles, that's called shield energy. And then there's of course, okay, just whatever, I give up. 
that's what you would call withdraw. And so if you rewatch some of these clips, you can tell the moments where let's say, maybe I'm putting up more of a shield versus, oh, I will go after that energy, beat you at the energy. It's kind of like a fight, right? In a fight, sometimes they're both trying to intrude on each other. They're both trying to spear each other. Sometimes it's one person shielding, the other person's intruding. Sometimes one person's withdrawing, so the person's like, oh, okay, I right, 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 can't engage right now. The other person's chasing, intruding, or maybe the person's shielding. There's different permutations, variations of these different intentions. And of course, what we're exploring here is there's something else. There's something else in Aikido, a benevolent intention. How does the benevolent intention interact with slash influence or take away from etc. the other other types of intentions. So as you can tell from the previous clip, I experienced that withdraw. The attacker, the person's coming into me. I first experienced what it's like for me just to really take the energy and get pushed around by it. Afterwards, I resist it. How much of it is a shield energy? How much of it is a spear energy? And then how can you turn your already resisting energy, whether spear or shield, into something benevolent? So if all these big words kind of confuse you, think about how your mind interprets situations and not just from a fight context, from anything, daily interactions. How does your mind interpret situations? How does your body react? How does your mindset and your body and the way you choose to connect with the world influence not just yourself, but them? So if you can get a little bit of that from Aikido, I think that's more than enough. Now the question is, is Aikido a martial arts, right? Because I've heard some good comments about how the translation that I have of Aikido is not correct. It was always about weapons. So potentially, if the word Aiki has to be looked together and it's about weapons, then it's completely different. It's not about connecting at all. Or if it is about connecting, that's maybe just one part of it. But whether Aikido is a martial art or not, can it be used in a fight? That's for all of you to test and decide on your own. I am not the one to give you the definitive answer. And let's cut to some more ruckus footage now. See if we can learn more from their explorations. Sorry, just borrow your hands. Yeah. Thank you. It was... A lot of it was you know, here, that's an ikkyo, and that's a kuregeshi, yeah. and then we have like, that's a nikkyo. Yeah. So what else is there? There's a sankyo, you know, it's okay. all, I'm here, it's you're there. It's hard to control me from over there. That's one thing already, yeah. like, 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 it's easy to resist because there's yeah. not a lot of power. Like, yeah. the intention is that I connect my arms okay. with my body, but it's like... So now, with everything we've explored, Beyond just the intention stuff, look at that previous clip again. Was Ruckus even connecting to Oliver's center of mass, center of gravity, his center, his spine, whatever you call the place where the weight's distributed? Was he connecting into him? He was not. So a lot of these Aikido techniques, especially if they're not done under pressure or they're not done when there's that awareness of center, the force gets stuck in a peripheral region of the body. Of course, you're not gonna move them. You're not gonna take them down. You're not gonna do whatever you can to them. Think about your arm. Your arm can go like this, right? Does that move you? But if you control the center, right? See, I'm controlling my center. Then your body goes where the center goes. For Aikido practitioners who are not afraid to challenge themselves under pressure, real pressure, see if you connect to their center, whether you can still pull off some of these techniques. I guarantee you some of these techniques, some, you're probably gonna be able to pull off if you're aware of connecting into their center. So now let's look at Oliver's response. Uh, bring that closer to your chest. Right, right, yeah. right. And there's one, I, I was- and Now you can uh, use your whole body to right. turn, you're gonna right. move me over. Right. So Oliver was basically telling Ruckus to connect his body to his limbs and when he's trying to do whatever on Oliver, connect to Oliver's center. Of course, Oliver doesn't use those terms, but his understanding is very Aikido-esque. And you find this a lot with high level martial artists, whether strikers or grapplers. They naturally understand what it means to connect, go into the center. For example, you've probably heard this in boxing or kickboxing, etc. You're not punching at the person, you're punching through. What does the punching through mean? It basically means this spear, this intrusive energy you're giving, it has to go through the center, the center of mass, the center of gravity of the person. So Oliver, like many high level jujitsu people or high level whatever, naturally understand connection, but he doesn't have that word in his vocabulary. Another reason to explore these concepts is Aikido doesn't have the monopoly to these 
concepts. It just happens that Aikido and some of its philosophy make way for a specialized exploration of some of these concepts. But again, I want to make it clear to people, you could be doing Tai Chi, you could be doing whatever. You probably will naturally start understanding center if you start thinking this way. So let's look more at this footage. This substitute, that was taught, mm. like this type of movement mm. in some cases. Mm. But for this, there was no alternative, mm. where I guess reminders me of this is what's called an ikkyo, where I use your elbow to, to mm. move you. I think, first of all, there's so much space. I'm not controlling your body. Yeah. It's hard to do something with this movement. But yeah. when we were doing the uh, underhook, I guess, like here, when I was using your whole body, sure. that seems quite similar. But yeah. that's much more effective where yeah, I'm... Yeah, yeah. Just like you can use Aikido to kind of explore concepts that are very present in all of life, I want to give Rukas two other methods, so to speak, of seeing what I'm trying to communicate. Now, from a martial arts standpoint, there's other grappling arts that you could potentially explore that might be able to help you see this just because the explanations, the words, etc., the faces are different. There's a Filipino martial art called Duma demonstrations I've seen. There's a lot of connection to the center. There's a lot of awareness awareness of the center, whether it's conscious or not. The other really cool way of seeing some of this is look up an animation concept called line of action. Animators, when they're trying to draw motion, often are very good at figuring out where the force is going and where the center of mass is. And line of action is another way not from a martial arts standpoint, but from a visual standpoint of figuring out and trying to understand what center and intention is. So I recommend anyone, not just Rukas, look up line of action when it comes to martial arts. And here's an example. A lot of times animators, when they really wanna break something down, they can break it down into what's called a line of action. Basically, where's the center? Where's the force going? So these are some examples. Now, from a martial arts standpoint, I really like this image right here. Look at this guy. Why does this guy's kick look off? Why does he look like he's going to fall? Because if you look at the line of action, it's already showing you where his center is and where his force vector is going. His force vector is going too much this way. Right? That's why this guy looks off balance. If he kicked at you, you push here into a center. Or if you get in, you push here, he's going to fall over. Why? Look at the line of action. You see that? The line of action tells you where the force is going and where the center is. Is he in balance? Absolutely not. So shout out this site. You guys can read line of action, learn to draw. So my interpretation of Aikido is very different than maybe what some people are taught. And I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. It's just my interpretation. From what we've explored, I think it's very, very valuable. Even if we decide that Aikido at the end of the day is not really a martial art, there's still a lot of applications, especially intentions, the type of energy you approach people. And this is nothing woo woo. It's not like, oh my God, I'm a hippie. It's not that. When people argue intrusive energy, spear energy, right? But sometimes you look at certain couples, for example, one person's yelling, nagging, the other person's like, okay, all right, right? That's one person intrusive energy, the other person withdraw energy. Maybe sometimes one person's, the other person's like, mm, I don't see it, you know, deflecting almost. So that's like shield energy and intrusive. So you can apply this to life. For example, another martial arts thing we always say, if you can, don't even get into a fight, run away. That's kind of like withdraw energy, right? Why do I need to engage? Do the spear, the shield, even the Aikido, if I can just withdraw, if I can just run away. A lot of these concepts ultimately end up just being the same thing, but just different ways of defining interactions, human nature, and the body and the mind. So I hope this gave you some things to explore. Some of these random drills we just came up with, do them, see if you can improve on them or see if you don't like them, etc. Go support Rukus on his journey. He's had quite the journey with Aikido and anyone else that's felt frustrated with any martial art you're doing, or if you really like the martial art that you're doing, constantly learn and constantly improve. And if you find a benefit, keep doing it. For the sake of Aikido, maybe we should feature some more pets because pets, I think, bring out a lot of beneficent energy.
So I'm gonna pose to you guys a final idea. As you guys know, I walk dogs sometimes to get my mind off social media. And there's a little dog I walk. He's basically a therapy dog. And after holding him in my arm for a few minutes, it just makes me feel so good. Now, a lot of hippie people talk about the heart center. I'm sure you've heard about the heart center, especially in this day and age. So could the heart center be sort of the same feeling that people get when they're connecting benevolently in Aikido? It's a thought that I'm gonna give to you guys. I don't know what the answer is, but I have this gut feeling. It's two sides of the same tree. I don't know if that's the right expression. So that beautiful energy you get from holding a therapy dog and your heart center opening up in Aikido. Is it all sides of the same die? All sides of the same coin? That's the question I'm gonna pose for you guys.